Hi everybody, this is Shane with Wake Essentials. We're just going to go over a basic install. In this situation we've got a Mastercraft and we are installing an H2O on it. We have measured our widths to establish that we are okay with an H2O. We've marked out our desired location for the mounts. Once we've got our location picked, we, got it, we go inside here and make sure that we can get to the back side. There's no wiring, nothing in the way that's going to cause any problems. Once we've got that set up, we take uh, our gasket and we go ahead and mark our holes out with our gasket. And then I like to uh, pre-drill a hole with a smaller bit that just makes sure that I stay centered for the, so we don't got a cricket mount or something. We want a nice and pretty one. We do that on both front and back. Everything's good and I guess we're ready to drill. Okay, when you're drilling your hole, you want to make sure you go in reverse. When you take the drill in forward, it's just too aggressive and you can chip your gel coat. It's just a whole lot more friendly with your hull. There's no need to go fast. It'll take care of it. It'll push right on through, no problem. Gets a little stinky. Once we get our, our hole drilled, we like to use a ball grinder. It's a really handy little tool. You can pick it up at any of your hardware stores. Just check out your local places. It won't be no problem. This is going to put a nice bevel on the hole because you don't want that sharp edge. It's just a place for the little cracks in the gel coat to propagate from. So we just put that on there and run it. And there's your nice, nice hole. Okay, now we're ready to put the base on. This is what we've got going. We're going to make sure you grease these threads. These are stainless steel bolts and they will gall up and seize up on you and that's just a bad deal. On the inside of the boat, we've got a rubber gasket and aluminum backer plate. So it just makes it nice and strong. We're just going to slide that into the hose and my helper inside will put the plate and the gasket on and the nuts on the inside and we'll tighten her down. Okay, I'm just going to go over some of this attachment hardware with you. We have a powder coated base. I know earlier we had just an anodized one on there. It's a great finish, but we're just going a little bit, a little bit of an extra mile for this customer. So we went ahead and got it powder coated. We got a half inch bolt, the anodized swivel, and a quick release knob. Makes for great release in this tower and laying it down. I'm just going to tighten it up, preset this swivel at about a 10 degree angle, and then we'll be ready to just set the tower into its spot. Okay, we've got the next step of this a bigger H2O tower. We've got it laid out. I've stabbed the legs into the corners. You're probably going to have to chase these out, especially on a powder coated tower, just so it makes it easier to work with these detent pins. I've used a, a uh, wide out mark on this black powder coated tower, just to, for a reference point. We put that at 18 inches. We've got it orientated on the, you can tell the, it's just easier to lay it out so you can make sure you got your corners and your legs opposites for your proper orientation for the legs. It's all clean right now, but I'm fixing to grease these so they'll slide in and out of the H easier and they won't damage the powder coating. If you go in too far, you're gonna have to bring it out and you don't want it all scratched up. Okay, we've got this big air H2O on the boat. We've got the back leg stabbed into the H member. And then we come up here and we went ahead and we attached the legs to the quick releases. These are great. Love the quick releases. Now we'll just stand it all up and we'll stab the front legs into the H member. Okay, we've stabbed the front legs in, stood the tower up, and this is the point we put the straps on it, run one to the front of the boat and one to the back of the boat. And we've just got it just close to level, just to make it easy enough, a good point to start from. We've got our tape. Our tape kept us from sliding in too far and scratching up the, the corners. If you go in past where you want it, when you back, come back out, they're going to be scratched. So the tape stops that from happening. Okay, now we're on the preloading part. I know it looks crazy, but I promise there's a method to my madness. This is where the big air towers gets their strength. I've got a ratchet strap on each corner of the tower running over to the H member. This is where the white mark come in handy. 
got, you got the mark, white mark on there, you measure from your H member over to the white mark. Using your ratchet strap, you pull it in to when it's even on the other side. Once you got all four corners done to where you think they're good, you check them down here at the quick release, give yourself a little space, and you want about 20 pounds of pressure to pull that out. Okay, here's our little trick on drilling the stainless steel. We use a ratchet strap, we put the drill on low, and use the ratchet strap to really put a lot of force into it. It's kind of like a mobile drill press. It just really saves your strength. You don't get wore out drilling all these stainless steel holes. That easy. Okay, we're install installing a cross brace on this H2O. It's made up of the T, the strut, and the collar. These two are gonna be stainless steel holes, and these three will be aluminum. We put down a tarp on here to catch any of these, because these stainless steel drill shavings can burn the boat's interior, so it's always good to protect your boat. Okay, on the stainless steel, I use this, this, uh, compound bit that big air supplies with the tower it's a great it's great for the stainless steel it's got the smaller hole to pre pre-drill and keeps everything nice and straight and then we on this cot on the aluminum we jump up to the three eighths and you stick your drill on high and bust right through that we've got tape on here to hold it in place we've measured the other side to make sure it's in the right location down from these pins Make sure you slide these on from the top. The collar will not go on this leg from the bottom because of the bend in the leg. So slide it down. Be very careful not to scratch your tubing. Come down at least four inches. It says that in the instructions. There is a piece inside this tube. You do not want to drill through that. It'll take you forever. After that, just stick your pins in and your bolts and tighten it down to, I believe it's 20 pounds, and you'll be ready to go. Okay, I went around the tower, tightened all the bolts down, checked all the pins, lubricated, lock tighted. It's all done, just that easy. Now I'm just going to show you how easy it is to lay down. Just release the quick release. Hold your tower. Pivot it over. Now I put a tarp back here to make sure I don't scratch anything. Just that easy. Now I'll pull the pins and lay, pull the legs out and we'll show you how it looks then. Okay, we got the tower leaned over, ready to put it in your garage. But I know everybody doesn't have a big shop, big doors on it. So you just pull your pins, slide your leg out. Now from the ground, we're just a little bit over six foot to right here. Probably about two foot from the mounts. You can get in a residential garage now. All right, well, I think everything's done here. It's a shame from Mike Essentials. Hope to see y'all at the lake, man.